Hi everyone, Tim Brown. Welcome back to my Apple Podcast, the podcast that makes a personal connection to everything Apple. For this episode, I want to revisit Hype by Tumult. Hype is a great application for setting up HTML5 websites. Hype has flash-like features associated with it that allows you to create very cool animations, especially when going from one scene to the next or when animating individual objects within a given scene. It's a great HTML5 alternative to Flash. One thing though that you have to be careful about when using Hype is that it really is not set up to design large-scale websites. When you first start setting up your Hype project, you'll 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 know that or you'll come to discover that once your pro- project is done, your document is done you'll export it and it will come with an an HTML page and then it will come with a folder with resources those resources contain all the assets that are associated with your document now typically when you set up a website you'll have a number of different HTML pages with assets associated with each page but with hype you only have that one HTML page so whatever you're creating all the assets that are associated with that page are going to be loading at the same time and so a lot of people who work with hype have encountered at one time or another the challenge of loading their hype project so that the load time is not too long because hype is loading every single asset that's associated with the with the site that you're creating I ran into that several times. Uh, recently, I, I used Hype to set up my personal website. I, I, I'm used to setting up my website to have a lot of media, uh, particularly photos. And photos are definitely something that will increase the load time in your Hype projects. As a matter of fact, Hype recommends that images not exceed 1.5 megabytes. But if you have you know, a series of images, clearly you're going to exceed that size. So there are some other alternatives. So I'm going to show you. For example, here you're looking at my entire site that I set up. And I have quite a number of scenes here, far more than you typically should have in a website. So what I decided to do was to divide my high project into five different projects, each one having its own HTML page. So while I may have you know close to 20 scenes here, I went through and divided them up. So I took the first three, and this is basically a website highlighting my career you know, as a museum professional, for example. And so I took those three and just made a separate hype document, as you see here. And I exported this, saved it along with the assets, and and then I went through and just changed the links. Like for example, instead of linking within the project, we'll go back to the home page here. So I have an education button. And when you open up the inspector you'll see that I have it designated to go to the next scene which is my education page likewise with career it is designated to go to the career page and so forth so everything is occurring within the hype document yet since I decided to divide it up I had to change that approach so that instead of linking to different scenes within a single hype document I'm now linking to different hype documents. And so that requires a different link because now I'm linking to a separate HTML page that is going to be on my server. So you'll see that now instead of choosing jump to scene and then entering the scene that I'm connecting to, I'm using the go to URL option and then going to that HTML page that's associated with the second high project that I've created. So I essentially went through and did that for every section of the site and that helped to improve the load time 
for the entire site so that people aren't waiting there. You know, you can get a cup of coffee. It took so long for my, my site to come up. There are several pages, for example, where I wanted slideshows to appear. So I'll go ahead and show you a preview so you can get an idea of how much I wanted to go on in this site and why it presented some problems for me. Okay, so here's my site and one problem I had was that I wanted to show slideshows. So I, I'm going to go to my education page and in my undergraduate I just wanted to show my senior project. And here I wanted animations, you know, taking you from one image to the next. Kind of like thumbnail buttons. And I did this throughout my project. Now with all those slideshows, I mean, in addition to images, animations will also slow your high project up as well. So if you're, if you're interested in doing anything like what I'm doing, and you want to avoid the low problems that you inevitably are going to encounter when trying to develop a high project that's this size. One, divide your project up like I did here, but also finding a way to cut down on some of the animations. So actually I had crossfades for every scene and I decided to get rid of the cross scenes for crossfades for every scene and instead save the crossfades for the slideshows that I had set up within each individual section. Now another thing that, that you can do to help make the load times a little quicker is when you're setting up a slideshow that you can also load your images dynamically in a, in a very similar way that you would flash. So for example, here's the first scene in my slideshow series that I just showed you. Now normally what I would do is just import the photo directly into my project by just going to insert and then image and then bringing the, the file in that way. Uh, Hype recommends that you instead insert a box that's the same size as the photo and then double clicking on it and then entering the image source code into the box which then loads the photo dynamically into your project. So that's essentially what I did for each scene. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on this so you can see that in here instead of this being an actual photo this is being pulled from my server. So for example if I just cut this bit of code out you'll see that all I have here is a box. And yet when I paste that image source code in which is now on my server where my website files are located now the picture appears and I loaded every picture separately that way onto my server and then linked to that image this way using the image source code that will help cut down on the load times considerably now my images aren't too big but when you add them up you know you're talking about you know, four megabytes that I'm having to load that are included, you know, right as my high project is being launched. So you want to try to avoid that. That's one very good way to do that. So basically, if you want to see now what my final project actually looks like, I'll bring up the finder window here. And as you can see, initially I would just have that one HTML page, in this case, the index HTML page and the index slash resources folder. That would be the essential bulk of my website minus the preloader. But now you see with my site being divided into different sections, I now have a folder for each section. And I chose to keep the index HTML page separate from the enclosing folder for the resources but I created an enclosing folder for the other sections so that when you open them up you now, you now find that index file inside that enclosing folder and that's the page that I'm referencing when I link from one section of my website to the next. 
Now, while it's nice to take all of these precautionary measures to make sure your site is loading quickly by using the this method of importing your images dynamically there's you're still going to need a preloader a preloader is going to always be necessary because it's always better to have something visually present or something that visually appears to your viewer while they're waiting for a page to load it just always beats a blank white page as far as I'm concerned and so installing a preloader before your page launches is, is always a good idea and if you're not using preloaders I have a suggestion for that let me go ahead and pull up Dreamweaver for a second and I'm going to show you how that's done so here is your standard HTML page that is exported out of your hype document and right in this section here where it says copy these lines to your document and then where it says in copy that code in between that those two spaces is where you're going to insert your your preloader code and it goes right in this in the second line so you actually get two lines and you're going to add this third line of code it indicates the top and left position of the loader as well as the size of it as well as the image source path for that file that's the code you're going to add to this section of the HTML page now where do you get a GIF well you can create a preloader as a GIF by just simply creating an image that is the same size of your hype document it, it can even look like a hype, doc, hype document so that when it loads it doesn't appear as if there's anything drastic or new the transition just appears natural you can do it that way or you, you can choose to insert any kind of image you can sometimes I've included a series of images that show a, a progression or a transition and have saved it as an animated GIF and use it and use the animated GIF to preload the page. You can also go to online to get animated GIFs as preloaders for free, and there's some great sources. Uh, one I'm going to recommend that you check out is this site here. It's preloaders.net/en for English and here you you see they'll guide you through the process of how you set up your GIF you can even customize the color you can determine whether you want the background to be transparent or not you can determine the size of it and so forth and it will generate a file for you it's fantastic again it's preloaders.net slash en so let me go ahead and um, pull up my finder window again so you can see the loader that I've used I've always liked the turning wheel loader um, and here I got it from preloaders.net and I was able to customize it and so I just chose the, the color red and this is the loader that you see before you come to each page of my website I'm going to go ahead and load my website so that you can actually see what it looks like when I'm going to timothypaulbrown.com. So here's my loader and my website appears. And now every time I click on something, what's happening is that I'm going to a separate HTML page to a separate folder that I created. The of course the website is designed so that it's uniform and it appears the same throughout but in actuality there are separate hype documents you know once you're inside each given section of course it's everything runs smoothly because once the documents have loaded um, you have no problems with load times but when I go back to the home button while well, I would normally just go back to an earlier scene in my hype project Instead, what I'm doing is I'm going back to another hype document. 
you're thereby seeing another preloader and then it's then loading that page but you'll you're noticing that my pages are loading a lot quicker than they typically would if I decided to include all the files in the same hype document so I'll just show one more here's the social page that I created there's a loader that is also inserted with those documents which then precedes the loading of that particular section of my website In this case, I have embedded Facebook, so I'm going to go ahead and switch to my identity so you can actually see what that looks like. Also, embedded Twitter, Snap Guide, and even Paperly. So, this is my social page. Again, this is a completely separate section that I set up as its own hype document. Click on the home button again, it takes me to my original hype document where I'm setting up my website with the index page and a few pages associated with that section including my bio and feedback pages. So those are basically some of the steps that I've taken to try and improve the load times for my website. Thinking of creative ways to structure my site so that I can set up multiple hype documents to make the load times a lot quicker. I hope this episode was helpful for those of you who are looking to improve your hype projects in this way. My name is Tim Brown, My Apple Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. You can check me out at myapplepodcast.com or if you want, email me at myapplepodcast at gmail.com. Thank you. Check you out later.